Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming by. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 351. Today, we're going to talk about one of the most publicly seen, heard, I guess is a better way to put it, the most mocked element of traditional martial arts, the noises we make. In Japanese, the kiai. We're going to talk more about that, a lot more about that. That's actually the focus of today's episode. But before we do, a little bit of housekeeping. If you're new to the show, head on over to WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com. Check out our show notes for every episode, photos, videos, links, all kinds of good stuff, as well as transcripts. Now, if you want to check out Whistlekick.com, you can save 15% on every single thing we have over there by using the code PODCAST15. We've been rolling out a number of new shirts and other apparel items. In fact, some of them are coming out just for a limited time. So if you're not in the habit of checking out what we have at Whistlekick.com every couple of weeks or so, you really should. And if you get on the newsletter list, we'll give you the highlights of what's going on behind the scenes, both on the website, with this show, other projects we've got going on. There's, there's a lot happening. If you are a passionate, traditional martial artist, you really should be getting the newsletter. We don't spam you. We don't give you a bunch of crud, a bunch of waste. Just try to keep it to the, the high points. Yeah. All right, let's, let's talk about this stuff. Let's talk about this subject. Now, why do martial artists yell? It's a topic, it's a question that, if you're a traditional martial artist, you've received probably a bunch, at least once. And it's a question that I receive, even as the host of the show, from other martial artists. People do it, and they don't even always understand why they do it. Now, you may have seen some martial arts movie or maybe gone to a competition, and you've noticed that when people execute certain moves, they yell. They yell while they do it. Now, not always, but they do in many cases. And in fact, in some more modern styles of forms competition, there's a lot of noise happening. And maybe you're wondering why. Maybe you think that it's a waste of energy and this yelling is completely unnecessary. Or maybe you think it's just part of the tradition that is passed from previous generations in some forms and some spots in the form. Now, let's skip all that assumption. And let's talk about these yells, these kiai. What is a kiai? First, the term kiai has a meaning. And kiai is a Japanese term that means energetic yell. I've also heard it translated as spirit yell. Ki means energy, while ai is the conjunctive stem of the verb ao, so it becomes an emphatic marker. A kiai is only a short yell, and it's usually expressed or uttered, said, however you want to choose that verb, when performing an offensive move, a particularly important one in some forms. If we're going to spell this out, the usual spellings might be haya or aya, ia, hya, or something like that. Often it is two syllables, not just i, but aya, ia. Now, Keep in mind that not all noises that martial artists make are these, these yells. They're different. They're, you know, we can kind of classify them as, as ki. And if, if you practice other arts and, and you don't do the Japanese, don't, don't get on me about that. I got I to gotta pick one collective term somewhere. We are going to talk about how it relates to Taekwondo and others in a moment. But we've got ki and we've got We'll call them grunts. It's different. You can tell, you can hear it, you can feel it. You can feel that difference. Now, Korean martial artists, they've got this, this concept too, and it's often called a ki up or ki hop. Ki in Korean means energy, while hop or yup means to join. So it's joining or concentrating your energy, and then you release it through yelling. And what I find fascinating about this is that we have this, this concept of projecting energy. It shows up in a ton of fighting games, and it shows up in movies. It's really something that, whether you are a martial artist or not, this idea, this fantastic idea of being able to project your energy outside of your body, it's something that, that I think really interests, it fascinates us. 
And it's something that is so common to the culture of martial arts, at least the way we discuss it in the Western world, that maybe there are some roots in reality. Now, less common, there is the silent kiai. And instead of yelling, it's done by exhaling strongly. Now, back in the days in, in Okinawa, practicing karate was prohibited, so the practitioners had to be silent when practicing their kiai. The loud kiai is more popular now. And of course, if you've ever practiced your kiai, if you've gotten good with it, if you know how that feels, try practicing that without making much noise. Mind blowing stuff, stuff that will send you back to the drawing board for sure. Now, the purpose. What's, what's the point of doing these yells, these kiai? And there are different purposes. For example, in Japanese martial arts, like judo, kiai is used to intimidate the opponent or to maybe express confidence or a victory. And in kendo, kiai can be part of an attack. Kendo practitioners do loud kiai along with their attacks to earn them point for every successful hit, excuse me, in some competitive spaces. A kiai, when it's properly done, will constrict the muscles in the stomach and the diaphragm, and those can be used to lessen, to reduce the damage received from an abdominal attack. Along with this, martial artists will learn proper breathing when executing their techniques, especially those that are part of a series. In other words, kiai, when you get hit in the solar plexus, and it's not going to hurt as much. And I can attest to that. It doesn't always happen intentionally. But if you can stay relaxed, bah! yeah, good stuff. Are there rules when you're doing your kiai? Yeah. Kiai, in, in some tournaments, it's required for certain points. Uh, for example, in some traditional karate tournaments, when you're doing kata, you have to kiai. And moreover, kiai have to be done in certain spots in the kata. You can't just throw a kiai in wherever you want, as opposed to open competition where you might have it in other spots or wherever you want, or depending on your definition and, and the practitioner, maybe on every move. I have participated in schools where they kiai on every move. It's exhausting and I don't like it, but there is some logic there. Now you can do a kiai whenever you want, but here are some thoughts. A properly done kiai doesn't come from your throat or your vocal cords. It comes from your diaphragm, from your guts. It's got to be from a deep part of you. And it's like, it's like singing. We've all heard someone who sings really well, really passionately. You can tell it comes from a part of their soul. That's a properly done kiai. We've also heard people who just kind of sing. Yeah, it's there, but there's no passion behind it. Does it resonate? Try not to tighten the muscles in your throat to make a louder kiai. Try to use your abdominal muscles. Try to imitate the muscular usage you would have during a cough. It's the best way I can express it. There is almost nothing more intimidating than getting ready to spar with someone and having them actually kiai. I mean, a real kiai, a loud one. Because let's face it, it's kind of goofy. So to have that, have that confidence to express that in that space, whew, people know that you're, you're, you're there for business. And my favorite use of a kiai in forms is to work with transitional movements. In any form, you have these sort of sections that come through. And connecting those sections, depending on the form, can be difficult. Sometimes it doesn't look right. I found that by adding a kiai in, in certain spots, it can better connect, make the form more fluid. Now, if you're an ultra-traditionalist, maybe the idea that I'm adding in a kiai bothers you, well, that's too bad. I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> of course, these noises come from different people, so they're going to sound different. And that's not only okay, it 
It should be. It should be yours. It should be your own signature sound. And what's important is that is the feeling that you get when you do it, the one that tells you you're doing it right. And if you've never done a proper kiai, you don't know what I'm saying. But you know it when you've experienced it. And that's really the best way I can express it. There's a story in Karate Do, My Way of Life by Funukoshi that talks about Kiai. And it was about Master Matsumura who defeated another master without any attack. And yes, I know, it's a bit of a gimmicky story, but supposedly this happened. Funukoshi considered it a legendary story, and that's why it was in the book. And here's a summary of that story. Matsumura once visited an engraving shop that was managed by a man who was in his 40s. The engraver had a great physique with rippled muscles. Matsumura, on the other hand, was in his late 20s, and he was less muscular as compared to the engraver. The engraver recognized the visitor, recognized Matsumura upon seeing him. Matsumura was a well-known karate teacher then, and he was the only one qualified to teach the head of the clan. The engraver took this chance of meeting Matsumura and asked him if he could teach him karate. Matsumura said no. He declined that request, and he said that he was unhappy with karate, and he no longer wanted to teach. The engraver persisted, and so Matsumura told him the reason why he had quit teaching. Matsumura was no longer teaching the head of the clan because he was reprimanded and commanded to leave immediately. He taught the head of the clan a lesson for being too indifferent and injured him pretty seriously in the process. Matsumura knew that the engraver was a karate expert as well, so he was wondering why the engraver was so persistent in seeking instruction from him, a man so much younger. The engraver told him at last that he was just curious how Matsumura taught karate. Matsumura still said, you know what, I'm all set. And so the engraver invited him to a match. And Matsumura didn't agree right away. He asked the engraver, he said, you know, are you, you ready to die? We're both experts here. And the engraver said, yeah, without any hesitation. And so they scheduled the match immediately. The match began with the two of them standing face to face, about 12 yards apart. The engraver drew near to Matsumura, and Matsumura remained calm. The engraver was baffled with Matsumura's defenseless posture, as Matsumura stood with his head just kind of resting on his shoulder. Matsumura must have a plan, he thought, and the posture might be a trap. So as he launched his attack, Matsumura reacted only by opening his eyes wide and staring deeply into the eyes of his opponent. The engraver drew back immediately as he felt that something was about to happen. Matsumura didn't move, but the engraver started sweating heavily and his heart was pounding hard. They both sat down and continued the match shortly after. Matsumura still stood in the same position. The engraver now decided to finish his attack, and he came closer, step by step. At around four yards, he couldn't move any longer. Matsumura stared at him with that same intensity he did before, and the engraver couldn't take his eyes off of him. He was sure that if he did, something would happen and he would regret it. but he was stuck in a difficult situation. So he chose to employ a loud kihai. It was so loud that it echoed back from the surrounding hills, and he expected that Matsumura would be intimidated, that it would break him, but he was wrong. And Matsumura remained unmoved. In fact, he smiled. He told the engraver that the match would not be finished, just with shouting. Now the engraver was even more determined to go on, and he told Matsumura once again that he would fight to the death. So they began again. The engraver attacked without hesitation. However, Matsumura immediately gave out his own loud kiai. And the engraver was immobilized and actually fell to the ground, helpless. Finally, the engraver gave up. He realized that Matsumura's skills were way beyond his own. And before they parted ways, Matsumura left the engraver with a little bit of wisdom. I'm a human being, and a human being is a vulnerable creature who cannot possibly be perfect. After he dies, he returns to the elements, to earth, to water, to fire, to wind, to air. 
matter is void, all is vanity. We are like blades of grass or trees of the forest, creations of the universe, of the spirit of the universe, and the spirit of the universe has neither life nor death. Vanity is the only obstacle to life. And this story teaches us that our opponents can be intimidated by our body language. Master Matsumura gave his opponent a death stare in the first two rounds. Though the engraver never lost before this time, at least according to the story, Matsumura's strong resolve overwhelmed his own. And when the engraver did Kiai, Matsumura did it too. Intimidation can really prove useful, not only in the martial arts, but in other sports. To me, there is nothing more powerful than a properly executed Kiai yell. It's something that when I hear it, I can tell you a lot about the martial artist. I can tell you about their awareness of their body. I can tell you about their confidence. And I can honestly say I've never experienced, because you don't just hear it. I've never experienced a great Kiai from someone who is not a great martial artist. It is probably the single best indicator to me of someone's martial skill. And maybe that's why I love them so much. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you learned something. And I ask that you not send me voice recordings of your key eyes to critique because I'll get a headache. <laughs> there are a lot of you out there. What I would love is for you to check us out on social media at Whistlekick, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can email me directly, jeremy at whistlekick.com. You can find the show notes and transcripts at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And you can find all of our products at whistlekick.com. Don't forget the code PODCAST15 to save 15%. A lot of what we do is also on Amazon, if you would like to purchase there. I want to thank you for your time today. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your support of Whistlekick, of Martial Arts Radio, of everything that we're trying to do here. I appreciate you. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. 